we always think of Mary as the the star, the star of the Christmas really. story, yeah. but Elizabeth's pretty remarkable too. Oh, I mean, let's unpack her for, for just a moment. Um, I think I forgot she was from the priestly line. With all of that righteousness, the Bible says that she's righteous. They did everything according to the law, no children. And they were older, so it's kind of a triple whammy. They didn't have children, they can't have children, and they're old. Why would God have waited so long to send Gabriel to Zechariah to say, your wife, Elizabeth, will have a son? And, and the words there are almost ironic. The Lord has heard your prayer. Yeah. Well, excuse me, that goes back several decades. <laughs> yeah, uh. it does. There's a gap between God has heard your prayer and God answers your prayer, and it's called God time. And mm. in that gap, what's happening is we're getting ready for a miracle. I love that God often has barren women then give birth in a miraculous way because he gets the glory for it. Mm -hmm. We don't just say, yippee, we say, praise God. And so there's Elizabeth with her woo-hoo, and she does praise the Lord. That's what she tells everybody. You point out that the second appearance of Gabriel is when he identifies himself by name to the doubting dad-to-be. And his name means strength of God. Strength Gabriel of God. means strength of God. Yes. It's like God can handle this. Right. He Believe stands this, in the presence. Gabriel's gig is he stands in the presence of the Lord. Think about this. He still does mm. today. Uh -huh. 2,000 years later. He still does stand in the presence of God. And that's the angel God sent first to uh, Zechariah. There standing at the altar of incense. Really took him. It's interesting. He was in a holy place but he wasn't ready for something holy to happen. Mm. We're there all the time. We go to church, but we don't actually expect anything holy to happen. Wow, so he was overwhelmed. No wonder angels always say, fear not, because people are overwhelmed when they see them. Then next he appears to Mary and gives her this good news in that little town of Nazareth, less than a hundred people. What we have to remember about Mary is she was poor, uneducated, except God chose her, which made her very special indeed. And certainly her immediate, or almost immediate surrender, willingness. Oh, she only had one stunning. question. How can this be since I'm a virgin? She just wanted to know how. Not why me, not what's next, not when will this happen or where will this happen? Or she just wanted to know how. And when he said the Holy Spirit will come over you, that was enough for Mary. And remember, Moira, she was so young. I don't think any Bible movie has ever made Mary as young as she truly was. What do you think about 14? 12 to 12 and a half. Really? They were betrothed, a girl was betrothed as soon as she was able to give birth. So 12 to 12 and a half, the betrothal happened. Mom and dad were ready, had chosen a young man. One year went by and they married. So it's in that year that, of course, all this excitement happens for Mary, the appearance of an angel, calling her by name, the Lord is with you. Not may the Lord be with you like a blessing, the Lord is with you, it's a statement of fact. The beautiful thing is that just as Mary had that coveted honor of being the mother of Christ. Oh yes, every Jewish woman prayed that she would be the they one. They were hoping, weren't they? Yes. We have the awesome privilege of being indwelt, being temples right. of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Christ. And that's the kind of application you bring uh, to each one of these women. Absolutely. And Mary does say, behold, the bondservant of the Lord. May it be done unto me as your word has said. And so what Gabriel just said, she said that, I'll take that, what you just said. I'll take that. Mm. May your word be true. And of course, what I love is he hearkens back to Elizabeth to encourage Mary. Even your relative Elizabeth, who was unable to conceive, is in her sixth month. So she was unable, but God was able. And then Gabriel says this line, Luke 137, if you're looking for something to write at the bottom of a Christmas card, to write at the top of your New Year's resolution list, it would be Luke 137. Nothing is impossible with God. Mm -hmm. Nothing is impossible. Or another translation, God can do anything. I've percolated a lot on that three-month visit that these two unlikely mothers-to-be uh, spent together and how important it must have been to be mutually encouraged. 
where the world would be looking on, looking askance for oh, one reason yes. or another. Right. Either the age or pregnant out of marriage. Yeah. Or That's right. I think we don't understand how dangerous this was for Mary. Yeah. To be pregnant but not married um, put a lot of burden on Joseph. If he said, no, it's not my child, then Mary could be stoned and Joseph would have been given the first rock because the... the um, party who most injured and most innocent gets to throw the first rock. Mm. That could have happened to our Mary, but Joseph was a good and godly man. He decided to put her aside, a divorce. That was the only way they could end a betrothal. To protect her. To protect her. Yeah. But then the angel came and said, don't be afraid to take Mary. What she has conceived is of the Holy Spirit. So Joseph's a good man, but do you know he never speaks? <laughs> And Zechariah loses his ability to speak. So you can see why I focused on the women of Christmas, because they at least can talk. <laughs> They've got all the words. <laughs> they do. And Anna, let, let, let's just quickly move to the, to the third woman. We don't want to miss her. Um, a I widow. we know the least about her, but what a story. It, it, may, may I quote the, the line that just gripped my heart from your book? Anna, a widow in full-time service of the Lord, turned her loneliness into aloneness with God. Right. Liz, I'm sure we have men and women watching today right. who need to know how they can turn their aloneness, in, uh, loneliness yes. into aloneness uh, with God. Absolutely, this time of the year is so hard for I think the majority of people, all of those who have happy families and happy homes, Christmas is good. But for so many, they're alone this Christmas season. And so this word from God, you're not alone. Mm -hmm. Anna focused on the Lord. She actually lived in the temple. In the court of women, they had apartments in the corners. And so she probably had one of those. It says that she worshiped God day and night, fasted and prayed, two of the great Christian disciplines. Um, she was a woman who gave it all to God, asking nothing back. We never see her whining or saying, oh, why don't I have another husband? Or why didn't I have children before I lost my husband? Or why am I stuck here all the time? We just never get that from Anna. When she sees that baby Jesus in Simeon's arms, she makes a beeline for him and uh, does two things, praises God and tells everybody who longs for his appearing, the Messiah is here. He has come. <laughs> 